Hey everybody, welcome to the video. This video is a synopsis of the five pillars of hockey. If you look in the description below, we have links to the other five that we went through. This is a synopsis, putting them all together. The best teams, they understand how to execute and follow these core traits that enable the players to reach their full potential and reach greater heights. And as a coach, that's really what we should be doing when we're developing minor hockey players. We're really trying to get them into a situation where they're improving every single time they're on the ice. And these five pillars are a great way for you to revisit and refocus on what you're doing and how you can get these kids better. So without further ado, pillar number one, passing and receiving at full speed. Sometimes I feel like coaches think it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you feel! But it does matter. It matters in how fast you can play. It, it matters on with your team, with your power play, your breakouts. It gives confidence. Everything about passing and receiving at full speed is important. Here you can see some guys passing. They're facing each other, their skates. What we want them to do is have their skates facing up ice as if they were skating so that they could practice that. You could also see they weren't snapping their wrist and bearing down on the passing. This is quite typical. You see the puck fluttering around. You really want them to pass hard. You want to be able to receive it. And you don't want them to be batting the puck back at them. They should receive it and have it in a good position to pass again. Um, here's the situation now. This is a great drill. The pass, pass. And then as the skater is coming back, he needs to receive that pass. If he doesn't, he's just going to one-touch it and it goes a little bit faster. Here's another one. This is an example. Narrow wide passing drill. And players need to learn to pass while their feet are moving and receive while their feet are moving. So you can see how hard it is for the players. They, a lot of times they want to coast when they have the puck. So teaching them to keep their feet moving while they pass is very important. This guy's are a little bit better. Really got to focus and, and, and train it all the time. In this circle passing drill, you can see how hard it is. That's what she said. It's a great drill. You have to lead the player. The player has to receive the pass around a circle, which is incredibly hard. That's what she said while their feet are moving as best they can. You can see this guy struggling a little bit. Um, you get to this guy, he wants to pause as soon as he gets it. And of course, on the backhand, it's even harder. So it's really important to receive, keep your feet moving, and try to go full speed. It's a great drill, an indicator drill that shows whether your kids are doing the drill and know how to pass properly. Uh, it's very hard to do this drill at high speed even for the older kids. So it's something for the younger kids, you might not even want to do this. Here's an example of a AAA midget team doing the drill. You can see that they're a little bit better. Their feet are moving relatively fast and even they want to stop and pivot their feet backwards and slow down when they're receiving the pass. But mostly their feet are going forward, they're receiving the pass and passing hard, leading the person as best they can. But you can see, even they screw up. It's a hard drill. It's really hard. That's what she said. This last drill is a great indicator drill for passing. It's called Bulldog, and the players really have to focus. They have a back checker, so they pass down the ice, just try to make three passes, and get a shot on net. Then they have to turn to the inside, and they have to back check the other two that are passing. So the two that are passing need to keep their feet moving to stay ahead of those back checkers. And it really forces them to move their feet and try to catch that pass. You can see this is a AAA midget team, and they're struggling with this drill still. It's probably early in the season. Sometimes they're getting it, sometimes they're not. But it's a really great drill. It's fun. The kids like it. There's lots of scoring involved. And it really makes them work on receiving that pass. Pillar number two is puck support. And that is basically the ability to understand the concept of support. Um, allowing for quick passings and transitions to facilitate puck movement in a team first approach to hockey. Um, it's really vital for people to be able to get in the right spot and support their teammates in a way that's going to make your team play fast. So here we go with number two, puck support. In this first clip, he's, we're watching number nine, White. And you can see he's the center iceman. He's coming back slow on purpose. And he's going to be reading the play. And you can see he's level with that defense. He gets nice and low. He's got a stick out there presenting a nice target. And he catches the pass when it's made. And he quickly gets his feet and toes up ice to redistribute the puck. And they break out. 
So he's slightly behind the play, but in a good defensive position in case they screw up. So here we go now. We got number 18, Little. He's going right to the net. He's nice and low. He sees that the defenseman's pivoting and going to the right, so he's going to pivot. He's going to have to receive this pass on his backhand. It's a skill that we really need to teach our players. They have to be able to receive a pass on the backhand. So he's going to pivot, make that pass. He's nice and low. He's low and slow, and that, he's going low and slow on purpose. He gets, That's what she said. Gets the pass, turns up ice, and he's able to redistribute that. Now we got a different angle here. So the puck comes up the wall, and then back. And you can see the defensive support. Everybody's in a good position, and the centerman makes a little chip to the side, and they break out. Okay, here's another one. Vancouver centerman's coming back into the zone. He's in the middle of the ice. He's reading the play, and he's there for a pass. He doesn't get the pass, so he's below the puck. So it's not about being fast, it's about being in the right spot. So you can see here, he's turning. He was in a good defensive position. The defenseman goes D to D, and he's going to cut right down. He's almost in the paint, in the crease. That puck comes across, and he's going to have his stick in the right spot. D-man turns, makes the pass, and his toes are up ice and they break out. Here's one from the goalie. Goalie chips it to the D-man and the centerman is nice and low and slow in the right spot to get that pass. Here's another one. We can see that the defenseman falls. The other team gets the puck. But you can see we follow up below there so that when he tries to chip it down low he's able to turn it back and they break out down the ice. This is the last clip. You're going to see the defenseman comes in, the other D-man's going to come in, so he's just going to chip it to him. And the centerman's going to come in, and he doesn't activate into the corner. He's in a defensive position in case there's a breakdown. But the, he communicates to the D-man, and they're able to get him the puck. Uh, it's just a short, short, three or four foot pass, and he's able to break out. So you can see there's the chip. The defenseman's got the puck in the corner, and the centerman, he's just in a nice, just off the post, in a good spot in case there's a breakdown. Number three, pillar three is about scoring. And driving the net, uh, getting to those scoring places where you're going to be able to get those chances in those areas that allow more chances and more fun in the game. It's not just shooting, it's about driving the net, paying the price to get to places where you need to be able to score, and it's a mindset about trying to score in practices as much as possible and in games as much as possible. So here we go with scoring. Here you can see the science of scoring. It's a, it shows you where the goals are being scored. And it's not surprising that the goals are mostly scored in front of the net. 21 right in, right in front, but just a little bit more further out, still close to the net, is 34. So that's 55% of the goals right there in that little area. You can see in that area that the wrist shot is the predominant one, 47.9%, the backhand 17, and tip in. So those are the ones close around the net that, that are making for the goals. In the second area, you can see that wrist shot's 53%, backhand 14 point, and tip ins are 13. So they're close still. And the further out that you go, the wrist shot, and the pretty well there's no tip ins or backhands, but the wrist shot, the snap shot, and the slap shot get higher and higher percentages because you need to have that power from outside. And you can see here, this is a goal scored in an NHL season. 49% are wrist shots, 14% snap shots, uh, slap shots, 12%. So that's 70-some percent just on uh, snap shots, slap shots, and wrist shots. So the tip-ins and deflections, those are pretty integrated skills for NHL players. And uh, you can see the wraparound is almost nothing. So when we teach kids, we need, really need to work on those. And we always start with a wrist shot because of the amount of time that it takes and the strength and, and coordination. It's always the first one we teach. And teaching to shoot, it's not, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be hard. Here you can see Crosby. He's receiving it, trying not to stick handle, load it, and shoot it as quickly as he can. Taking it from the forehand and the backhand. So it can be easy to teach. And here we are in the gymnasium. So we set up any, any kind of a situation to teach. And really when we're shooting, we want to transfer weight, snap the wrists, the top hand does a lot of the work. And we want to make sure that we're looking. So the kids are looking where they're shooting. Don't just have their head down. Here's a simple drill. It's just pass, pass, shoot. 
So they pass, receive the pass, pass back, receive, and shoot. And we're, we're at, with the older kids, we're trying to get them so they receive the pass, they don't stick handle, and they immediately get into a shooting position to shoot. And the logical progression here is pass, cross, shoot. So they're going to pass, we're going to drop it, and we always want them to drop it to the outside to protect the puck. And then they turn to the net and they shoot quick. So you can see these are midget AAA guys and they're doing it pretty decent. But you can see it's also a skill to try to drop that puck in the right spot. So the younger kids wouldn't be working on this, but the older ones can. And it's it's a good one to get that puck quickly in the shooting position. Whether you're uh, on the inside or the outside of your body, you want to get it in that position quickly. And the other guy is hunting rebounds. So we're always hunting rebounds as we go to the net. The drill is called pass, pressure, shoot, pop. But we've also put in a second pass. So what they do is they got to pop out to a position where they're in, in a, at the top of the circle to get a pass. They get a pass from the corner. And they after they shoot, they got to hunt rebounds. So they're shot. The other guy's going to the net for a rebound. If he doesn't get a rebound, there's a pass. Makes a move, a shot, and he's got to pop out. Receive that pass. Shoot as quick as he can as the guy's going to the net for rebounds. There's a shot coming. The other guy's going to the net. If there's no rebound, he pops into the top there. He tries to get a pass. Shoots. Then he has to pop out to the top of the circle. Gets a pass. Shoots quick. Guy's going to the net for the rebound. If there's no rebound, he gets a pass from the corner. So it's a good drill. It helps them to hustle, get in those spots, and hunt rebounds, and really have a knack for finding that, that rebound and for finding the net when they're shooting. Pillar number four is defense and angling. So when we talk about angling, we're talking about every man learning how to prevent their, their player from getting to the middle of the ice um, and to the middle. So we want to keep them to the outside as much as possible with a total defensive philosophy to your team. Uh, and you're basically forechecking every zone. Uh, it's not just about defensive zone coverage. It's about playing man to man and making sure that we're using our angles to prevent people from getting into the best areas to move the puck uh, and score goals. So let's go with number four. I'm gonna play you a clip. The clip is about teamwork. You guys think I'm a dick. What? Okay, okay, well, maybe you are kind of a dick, but you're a fun dick. <laughs> and you're our dick. Of course, is a dick. But he's their dick. And that's important because in teams, everybody's got somebody like that a little bit. And if you are, as a coach, you need to make sure that everybody's included. Because a lot of times, in the most important parts of the game in the season, it's those guys that are going to come through for you. Just like Stifler does. Me, I will sue you for all your worth. I'm your dick. Now, it's also those guys that are going to take the penalty at the worst time of the year, too. So you got to be careful and make sure that we're including those guys because it's important. And as a team, defense needs to be played as a team, and it's very important. So let's get into some of the clips today and some of the things that are really important about angling and playing defense. And there's a lot to go through with angling and best place to start is just with little guys and contact confidence, getting used to the, your, going into the boards, how to take a hit, how to give a hit. And a lot of it is skating, getting low, and then doing it with a person, making sure you're in the proper position and getting your body in the right spot. And of course, then we can go to moving and always start in the corners at an angle so that the kids aren't scared. And here's a great example from Jonathan Taves. He's coming in on the defense, perfect angle, pow. And lastly, the last pillar is skating. And not just edge control, but and not just skating fast, but developing speed training. Uh, learning to accelerate quickly and efficiently and gain momentum and when you get possession of the puck. Evasive moves uh, can be taught at full speed when we're practicing. Uh, and this all leads into all areas around the ice. So skating is extremely important. So here we go with pillar number five. Just like we did in the last... McDavid video that we showed we, we work on edges and we want to go 
probably six to ten minutes at practice so the kids don't get bored. And you can see these are AAA players, and they're stick handling, and they're working on inside edges. Then they're going to be going to outside edges. They'll be doing slalom, which is two feet back and forth, and heel to heel. Uh, right now they're, they're going to outside edges where they step over. And there's a progression that I'll show you at the end. Obviously, you would start this skill. You want them to do it really well without pucks. Then you can add stick handling. And then eventually, you can add passing too. So they're passing with a partner while they're doing these skills. So there's a quite a few things. The other thing that we'll be talking about is what do you do in different... Like this is a full ice drill. What do you do when you only have half ice? There's ways to do it. And there's other ways to do it full ice as well. So here they are with slalom two foot want to get power in those edges as you go you can see we've got one line that's shooting on the goalie on the one end and the other line comes back and shoots on the other end and this is just one way to set it up here's another way is with circles so we're working on crossovers they're going half a circle taking a shot and then going to the other circle and doing a full circle really working on crossovers now this is good for when you have half ice practices is one of the sequences you can use uh, and you really want them to work on good hard crossovers another one now we're going to go around the gloves or pylons we're doing tight turns and it's the same sequence except we're doing tight turns and then we go to the other circle and we do a full circle on the other side so it's half and then full Here's some coaches, and you can see they're going through some of the sequences with coaches to make sure they feel and know what it feels like. And this is another setup. So if you have a full ice practice or a half ice practice, you can set them up at center. They go down the red line, and they come back on the blue line. They can pick up a puck at the blue line and go and take a shot on the goalie. Or if they're at, that, at the proper level, they could be stick handling with those pucks and go in and take a shot. And here's just what the minor hockey kids were doing. We got tight turn, tight turn. So it's half circle, full, full circle. And when you're on that second circle, you don't just have to do crossovers. You can see here we got them for, going forwards and backwards, doing pivots to the center, working on their edges. So there's different things that you can advance to. There's another one, transition skating. So they go up to the ringette line, backwards to the goal line, pivot to the outside, half circle, shot, and a full circle on the other side just another half ice sequence so the progressions for this are pretty simple I mean obviously you want to be getting starting slow and getting faster that's what she said and of course then you want to make it more complex and get harder each time that's what she said and these are the five progressions that we would use first of all with no puck make it easy as possible second we would start stick handling then we try backwards then we get advanced to jumping from edge to edge and getting power and then we could pass with partners as we go through this okay so the first couple scenarios that I'm going to show you are full ice scenarios so if you have you can one of the setups can be you can have players on each side and they go and they're going to do their just like the other progressions without pucks then with pucks then hopping then backwards those those kind of progressions but It'd be the same thing except they go in this direction. All the way across the red line. And then they come back. And they go on the blue line back. And then you can have a pile on here. And they have a bunch of pucks. And they can pick up a puck and come in and shoot on the goalie. So that's the first scenario. These guys would do the same. Come back this way. Pick up a puck. Shoot on the goalie. Okay, the second scenario for full ice that you can use is you get two lines at the corner. This is good for one team. You can have a pylon over here. And both these lines go at the same time and they might be doing inside edge, inside edge, back and forth, all the way down. And just like the other drills, progressions can change with pucks, without, whatever. It doesn't matter! All the way down. And the outside line, when they get here, is going to come in and take a shot on net. And they're going to come back on this side doing the same skill the back of the line. The inside line is going to come and when they get to this pylon they're going to come down the center and they'll take a shot on net on this goalie. So you're getting two different shots you're using the full ice and that's your scenario too. And in half ice situations actually a lot of people are really negative about half ice situations you can do a lot of stuff in half ice. You can do everything that you can full ice in half ice. 
So if you're a minor hockey coach, don't worry about being half ice all the time. There's lots that you can do, okay? So in this situation, we're going to do a, a half a circle and a full circle drill. And there's different progressions you can do with this too. But we're going to start with all the players lined up in the corner. And two players at a time are going to come. They're going to go half ice with a puck. Shoot a couple feet apart so the goalie's ready. And then they're going to do crossovers and finish in this corner here. So they do half a circle, full circle. So that's the sequence, but there's a lot of progressions we can do from that. So the next time we might come and we might end up going in here. We'll put two pylons here like we did in the video. And you do a tight turn, tight turn, around the circle, take a shot, and a full circle. Okay, then you can do mohawk turns or, or heel to heel, heel to heel, heel to heel, around, take a shot, and end up in that corner. And of course, you can from that point, you can even get into, on this, you don't have to do crossovers here, you can do inside out or inside edge pivots until they come into that corner too. So there's lots you can do in this progression. And one of the last things you can do is if you're a half ice team and you only got half, is you can do it just like the full ice one, except of course, you only got this side. So you can go down this red line and back, and get some pucks here and go in for some shots. Um, that's the different options you can do. You can also set this up with different stations. So you could have someone working on some skills in this circle and you could do this here, get a shot, line up, come back up. So there's different things and there's no wrong way to do it. There's just options and you want to really be keeping in mind that you want the kids participating lots. You don't want them to be waiting in line very long and you don't want to be talking to them too long. It should be quick and it should be, there should be some feedback and you want to push them to make mistakes so that they're getting better. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, please hit that like button and subscribe and don't be afraid to turn on your notifications so that you know when the next video is going to drop. Okay? Use these five pillars as you move forward. Always revisit them. Good luck and we'll see you in the next video.